When we learn the key structure, we should catch the key structure. Verrazano sailed into New York Harbor in 1524 and named it Anglom. 那么这部分是句子的主干。And they tell him about whom little is known. The Verrazano 的同位语。在这个同位语表达方式当中，请同学们注意。Little is known about Verrazano. 同学们发现 about whom, whom, 指的 Italian. 那么对于这位意大利人来讲，我们知之甚少。Let's say we know nothing about him except that he is an Italian. We know nothing about him except that he is Italian. Now let me paraphrase it, and you can understand me better. Verrazano sailed into New York Harbor in 1524 and named it Anglon. Verrazano is Italian, and we know little about him. Are you quite clear about it? Okay, now let's go on. He described it as a very agreeable situation. Describe something as, as, 和宾语补足语搭配连用。那么，可用于该句型的动词常见的有 ：see, view, look upon, recognize, regard, treat, accept, take, and so on. Now, please translate the sentence into Chinese. I should describe the attempt as a failure. I should describe the attempt as a failure. 我应该把这次尝试描述为是失败。She was described as a good-natured woman. She was described as a good-natured woman. Okay, can you understand me? Now, please translate the following sentences. 他母亲把他看作是一天才。His mother regards him as a genius. 我对他的话信以为真。I accept his words as true. 这个句型结构是相当重要的。He described it as a very agreeable situation. 那么他对该港做了一个这样的描述。地理位置十分的适宜 ，agreeable， 宜人的，地理位置相当的宜人。And where is it situated？ 那么它位于哪儿呢 ？Located within two small hills。Located， 过去分词做定语，修饰限定 situation。Let's say a very agreeable situation which is located。Within two small hills, 我们用定语从句进行了示意。坐落于两山之间的宜人的地方。Okay, now please translate the sentence to imitate the key structure. 我喜欢位于两山之间的这个小村庄。I like the village located within two small hills. Okay, now let's go on. In the midst of which. Float a Greek river. Maybe the key structure is a little bit difficult for some students, especially the learners. 那么这个句型结构对于初学者来说难度稍大，因为没有很好的掌握。In the midst of which float a Greek river? 这个 which 究竟指代的是什么呢 ？Which 关系代词用来指代 hills. Now I want to paraphrase it. In the middle of the two small hills, flowed a great river. 好，我们不妨采用同学们比较习惯的正常结构。一条大河从两山之间流过。A great river flowed in the middle of the two hills. In the midst of. 这是比较古老传统的用法。那么在口语当中，我们习惯运用。In the middle of, 
Okay, now translate the sentence, please. The car is going in the middle of the street. In the middle of the street, 在街道中央 In the middle of 不仅可以表示方位的中间，也可以表达为时间、地点。For example, in the middle of the night, it means at midnight. In the middle of the winter. In the middle of summer, and so on. In the midst of which, 因为介词短语根据句型结构的需要前置，所以句子要采用倒装结构形式。同学们发现 ，flow a river, flow 在主语 a great river 之前。Now, please analyze the sentence. 我们来到了一座农庄，在这个农庄的前面有一座大山。首先，同学们注意，我们限定了我们来到了一座农庄。We arrive at a farmhouse. Farmhouse 先行词已经体现出来。那么，在这个农庄之前，如果同学们用定语从句的话 ，in front of which 我们应该用 which 指代 farmhouse。这样就限定了你的句型结构，动词要位于主语之前。In front of which is a mountain。同学们对这个结构是否把握了呢 ？OK， n o w let's go on。Though Verrazano is by no means considered to be a great explorer, his name will probably remain immortal. Though Although, even though, 引导上不状语从句。虽然 Villazano 无论如何不没有被人们看作是一伟大的探险家，然而他的名字将永垂不朽。在这个表达方式当中 ，though 一定要注意，用了 though 和 although 就不能再使用 but。但是如果讲强调转折关系的话，我们可以用 yet。Now listen to me carefully. No. They managed to take photographs first, yet they got into trouble soon. Though they managed to take photographs first, yet they got into trouble soon. By no means. 这个固定的介词短语用来加强语气，表示绝不，无论如何不。For example. It is by no means pleasant to take a crowded bus. It is by no means pleasant to take a crowded bus. 乘坐一辆拥拥挤的公交车，这无论如何不是件让人高兴的事儿。那么 ，by no means 也可以表达为 not by any means， 或者表达为 not at all。大家对于 not at all 非常熟悉了。For example, he isn't satisfied with our job at all. He isn't satisfied with our job at all. 他对我们的工作一点也不满意。好，或者换用 not by any means. He isn't satisfied with our job by any means. 类似的介词短语表示否定含义绝不的表达方式，请同学们记住。In no way. In no case. In no things. In no circumstances. Circumstances. C I R C U M S T A N C E S. Under no circumstances. On no account. At no times. 啊，尽管如此，他的名字将永远为人们所牢记。His name will probably remain immortal. 注意，我们重点要突出 remain immortal. Why? 为什么呢 ？For on November 21, 1964, the longest suspension bridge in the world was named after him. Was named after him. Let us say, 
the longest suspension bridge in the world was named for him, or the longest suspension bridge in the world takes his name from him. 所以同学们发现，如果我们想表达用什么来命名，我们常使用的结构 be named after, be named for. Take one's name from. For example, a state is named after Washington. A state is named for Washington. The state takes its name from Washington.